she basically laid for the class, and I got these, now there was zero, like five in policy, get out of the lives if you're late, it's not in a horrible way, obviously, but um, for health and safety, and she came in and she like, had a massive, like, she had a go at me, and she's like, I need this, like, this is everything to me, and I was like, well, obviously, you've calmed her down, and she kind of went away and came back, and she was like, look, I need this space, like, if I don't have this in my life, if I don't do the session balance of how many, um, what's the, the ratio of men to women, and it is definitely a lot higher on the men's side, and I think mostly, if, if anybody here is a part of a gym, you might see in a class, like this morning I had an 8.30 a.m. class, and I had uh, nine guys, and I had two girls. Um, and that put me in the super heavyweight category. Uh, I'm competing against girls that, you know, 150 kilos, 155 kilos, you know, the big, big girls. And for me to be performance ready and for me to win world class medals and do world class weights, I was never going to do it at 95 kilos. And my coach had to sit me down and he had to have a conversation with me and said, You're going to have to put some body weight on. And, um, you know, I'm now sat at 127 kilos in front of you. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was, I'm not going to say it was an easy journey. I'm not going to sit here and say, Eat loads of food and seeing your body changes is, is a really, you know, easy thing to go through. It's not. But at the same time, I've now come to a point in my life where I've realized that, you know, health is more important and that I'm really strong in the skin that I've done and obviously the amazing things that I have achieved that I wouldn't have been able to do. But did already, but we're going to talk about it anyway. The first thing that's really important for me when we're looking at someone's overhead position, when we're snatching, if you want to turn side on for me so we can see, the, everyone can see from the side, okay, is that the bar is over all of the major joints, okay? So we want it over the shoulders, hips, and predominantly down through the middle of the feet. Anyone at the back that wants to come around to the side and get a closer look, please do. Okay? This way, we're getting the most amount of support underneath the bar. The minute this bar, like I said, we're staying externally rotated here, so shoulders place sitting back and down. We want with our feet always to be set in the receiving position for the snatch. Okay? So for me, that's feet just slightly outside shoulder width. Remember when we're going into an overhead squat or into a squat full stop. If, we're able, if we want to be able to sit upright in the bottom position, we need to ensure that we're making space for our hips to sit between the ankles in the bottom position. So ensuring those feet are just slightly outside shoulder width, okay? Now to begin the overhead squat, I always think about, first of all, breaking at the knee first, okay? The, thing that, the reason why this is so important is because I want my torso to stay upright. Okay, in order for me to sit upright in my bottom position, my torso has to stay upright, okay? So we're breaking at the knee first. This is then gonna load the quads, and I want you to begin to go down into overhead, overhead squat position, okay? It allows the chest, as you can see now, to stay upright. Now everyone that's kind of sat down the middle of the room, once again, you'll now notice that if we're looking at this end of the bar, it's over his midfoot, okay? This is extremely important. However, one of the common mistakes I see people make when they're in this position is that the bar comes too far back, chest drops, and then all of a sudden, we're off balance here. Okay, stand on up for me. Look at whatever you're gonna focus on. If you train in a CrossFit gym or in any other gym that's extremely busy, you can easily get distracted, okay? So picking that point to focus on is really important. The next thing, and I want you to come do this for me now. Watch your head, Tom. Come and swear a little bit. Okay. The way in which I work out where my foot width is going to be when I'm snatching or in any lifting movement, okay, the easiest way, where would your feet be if you're going to jump as high as you can? Okay, so just jump for me as high as you can. Okay, that is where I'd work out where I'd have someone's feet in a set position. Okay, that's where you're going to produce most vertical force. Okay, so now I want you to approach the, approach the bar in the same foot position as you were just using then. The next thing for me that's extremely important when we're teaching someone the snatch movement is getting into the setup. Okay, if you get this bit right, then the rest of the lift is extremely easy. First thing, ensuring that the barbell is touching the shins in the set position. The reason why I want the barbell touching the shins in the set position is so that it's over the middle of his foot. If that load is heavier than you and you're initiating the movement, Okay, that bar's gonna pull you out of position. So it's the bars over midfoot. The next thing that we need to assess, now that we already know where his grip width needs to be, because we looked at it from the overhead position, 
is taking our grip. So I want you to take your grip for me now, Tom. Now, hook grip is an absolute non-fucking negotiable, okay, when it comes to Olympic weightlifting. So many people fucking hate hook grip because they're like, oh, my thumbs hurt or it's uncomfortable. It's not just only that we don't want our grip strength to be the limiting factor for the lift, but we need the hook grip in order to be able to keep our arms relaxed in the lift. That's why it's so essential, so that we can execute good technique, okay? So for anyone that doesn't know, you're not using hook grip, Tom, come on. <laughs> for anyone that doesn't know, hook grip is thumb underneath fingers when we're setting up, okay? So whenever I'm getting to this set position with my hook grip, it allows me then to keep my arms nice and relaxed. Now, next thing that we want to address is bum height. So Tom, if you can switch around to the side for me, please. Yeah, perfect. Just go down back foot. Is where our bum height should be in the set position, okay? Again, so you guys are making nice and simple. These are easy cues that any of you guys will be able to pick up on. In terms of working out where my bum height should be, I aim for knees and arms in line. So I know if there's space here, so his knees are back behind his arms here, then his bum's too high. You sit down for me now, Tom, really low, okay? If his bum's too low, now his knees are in front of his arms. However, finding a nice happy medium so that his knees and arms are in line, so lift the bum slightly for me here, a bit lower, a bit lower here, is then gonna put him in a pretty good position to initiate the lift. If you're in the right position here, your legs will fucking burn, which I'm sure Tom's now, now, now. <laughs> Okay, stand up for me now. It's important that in that set position when we're setting up for the lift, that we're feeling the load in the legs. So just thinking about pulling the shoulder blades back and down, so I'm stuck in my shoulder blades into my back pocket. So I'm engaged now in the lats. This is where I feel the tension when I'm in my set position for the snatch. Now a lot of people, get confused when we think about taking tension in the set position for the snatch by pulling the bar back in towards the shins, okay? And tightening up in the upper body. The last thing that we want is tension here in the arms, okay? So I think about setting tension here, but relaxing the arms here, okay? And then from here, it's important that the eyes are up, okay? This is important. Now to initiate the movement, the first phase from the lift, what I think about doing is I think about pushing the floor away with the legs. So I'm initiating the move by pushing the floor away with the legs. And I like to imagine this like, as though I'm grabbing someone by the scruff of their neck here and then getting them to push the floor away with the legs to initiate the movement. And the bar must stay touching the whole way through this first phase, okay? So something that we noticed there with Tom, the bar was away from the body. It's so crucial when we're Olympic weightlifting, that we're keeping that bar as close to the body, as close to the center of gravity as possible if we're gonna create good vertical force. So let's go again, Tom. This time, my cue or the thing that I'm thinking about when I'm initiating this movement is to get the bar touching the shins and then I'm gonna keep the bar touching, touching, touching until the bar comes past the knee. Stop there for me. And then from here, we can see his shoulders are still over the bar. He's loading equally between the quads and the back here. But then from here, what I think about doing is squeezing the bum and standing up onto the toes. Stand up onto the toes for me, okay? It's very difficult for Tom to stay up onto his toes if he doesn't squeeze his bum, okay? As soon as he squeezes his bum now here, you can see he can hit his full extension, extension at the ankle, knee, and hip very easily, okay? Under control is also very important, okay? So when you pop the bar back out from now. Okay, this bar is only like five kilo guys, so I'm not abusing him too much, okay? From here, step there, shoulders back and down. We're gonna bend at the knee to get into our hang position, okay? And we'll let the bar slide down. Okay, right. that's, stop there for me. It's important guys, remembering if you're getting into a hang position for a lift, that you don't do this, because from here, it's very difficult for me to use my legs without throwing my shoulders back. So whenever I'm getting into my hang position, all I'm thinking about doing is just bending at the knee. Now it's nice and easy for him to load the quads. Now from here, Tom, what I want you to do is just jump. Okay, and again. Now from this position, you can see now that Tom's hitting full extension and the bar is in a position where it wants to continue to go up, okay? This is creating the vertical force, the velocity for the bar to keep going, which gives us then the time 
to move underneath it, okay? So then, what I want you to do is pop bar down there for me now, okay? Now we've worked out how to produce the force from the floor up until extension, okay? We've got, I've got heart on the bar. Now this is the bit where people really struggle, okay? Is the transition underneath. Now what I like to think about when I'm getting to my top position here is not pulling with the arms, not using the upper body at any point during this lift, but to draw hold myself highly, highly accountable to my development. Um, and that's probably the reason that I'm still working at Gymshark today, if I'm honest. And I hope I can continue at this rate. And Be constantly on then. Do you have a work-life balance? Uh, no, not really. Um, I think it's like, it's very much like a thing, isn't it? Like work-life balance is a thing. And listen, I get it. I think it's admirable. And I, I, am, I appreciate those who have that. I also promote it within the business. And I think it's reasonable and I think it's fair. But I think for me to sit here right now, seven months in as CEO of Gymshark, splitting my time between Colorado and the UK, to say that I have a perfect work-life balance, I would not be telling the truth. I think I'd be telling fibs at that point. Um, I met some of the first people that joined Gymshark and uh, like Paul and Steve, who ended up really helping me out. I would just ask questions, and I, and I still do, do to this day. And I'm a firm believer that you can learn something from everyone that you meet, for one. Um, when I meet someone that really inspires me, I try to get their details and I try and learn from them. Um, I see if there's anyone that they could also connect me to. I try to connect other people as well. Um, like this, honestly, the, the biggest sort of bite-sized takeaway would just be to ask questions. Which is a perfect segue. I'm going to open the floor very shortly for all of you. To I think if you have something to say, lived experience isn't everything. How many people have read um, on a Facebook? Fat loss are relatively simple, however, the psychology is not. We've got walking past Greg's when a steak bake is coming at us. We have to navigate this thing. We need to get that book before get everything else. What I find, if you have the correct stimulus, to get people to do you know, uh, the right training or the right movement, it allows everything else to be structured around it. Now for fat loss, the stimulus doesn't matter. Our job as coaches is to help try and create that, is to provide that accountability. But if you've got clients or for yourself, if, you're, if your environment is, is working against you, you are going to be constantly working up here. More food, mean more micronutrients, which means a healthier you. More food means better training energy, better recovery, and better performance. Because what we're trying to do is not just change someone's body composition. It isn't about, it isn't just about, you know, clear Instagram. Following an Instagram plan is challenging, okay? What we need to do is provide people with systems and advice and, and coaching that makes that barrier of entry very, very low. Even in a 200 calorie deficit, 10% to see a small fat loss shouldn't negate energy levels, pretty good. Okay, this is their day, this is their weekly intake. So you can see here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, pretty good, okay? Most people, okay, I've got a bit of structure with work and training during the week, I'm okay. Weekends, again, I wanna let loose a little bit. But this is not too bad, Saturday is a little bit higher, Sunday, okay. this average is at 1,990. This is so, so common with people. This would happen all the time, but they think they're 20%, but it's not actually 20%. It's more than 20%. And again, they come in on Monday and they don't see progress, which leads to frustration. Don't be lazy and give your clients the things they think they want to hear. And just like dieting, we are constantly bombarded with things that prevent us from having good sleep. Netflix, social media, caffeine, 
seems to be a common thing over this these uh, weekend caffeine. Or I don't know, your missus wanted to have a pillow talk just before you get into bed. I want to show you a study that was, was matched. And this is only in a two week period. I can send you everyone the study as well. Um, other thing, this was accompanied by increased hunger and a shift to relative substrate utilization of less. Let's go, sonny boy. Oh, sonny. Oh, oh. 